Hi, my name is Tim. I'm Senior Application Specialist at ATR Soft. In today's webinar, we will have a look at a new feature for Custom Tools 2019 Service Pack 1. And this is the ability to export Kotlist into Excel or other formats. With me today, I have my wingman, Mr. Fly by Wire, Francois Simon, who will answer your questions, maybe, uh, because he has a few issues joining in. Uh, you can use the chat box in the GoToWebinar panel, uh, and then I'm going to make room after the session for more questions to let you follow this presentation better. We expect the webinar to take somewhere in the range of 15 minutes, and the webinar is being recorded as always and will be made available online later. Okay, so let's get started. The export feature was sent to the gym over Christmas uh, and to get a little more meat on the bones. Um, the result will today, today be shared with all of you, uh, but now we officially support export of Kotlist data to a large variety of file formats. I could begin listing all of these nice things that we have done, but a visual presentation seems to be in place. So with no further delay, let's get it on. Okay, so here is a pretty simple part file. Uh, yeah, it's up to you to decide if it's simple. But anyway, uh, this contain, as you can see, 22 cutlist items. There are some leg pipe, some lower crossbar, some short lower crossbar, and so on. Now, when I export this in 2019 SP0, we wouldn't get any information, any detailed information on, on this design, but we do that now. So if I run the export, you can actually see in the background, we are trying to isolate everything and, and make sure that we create preview images as well, but you will see in a few seconds. Okay, so now my part file is obviously in the export list, but along with that is all of the structural members and the part files, and if there were any sheet metal, those would be in here as well. Uh, Weltman is defined by this icon. Default parts, like the foot plate, uh, we can take this one, is listed as a folder, that's a part file, and if it was a sheet metal file, we could see that as an icon as well in here. Um, now we are pulling data from the properties of everything that we have in the list. So I have added a Weltmund number to my cut list items, um, but this is completely up to you how you want to configure it. Now, when I look at this view, uh, one thing strikes me that I could really use the length of these Weltmunds. So I'm going to add that. To do that, I'm going to right click on one of these ones and go to the properties. And then from this list, I can see that there is a, a value called length. So I cannot copy these ones because they are, are linked, but you need to take this word exactly as, as it is and then go in to custom tools. And then for the cut list property, we can add a new one, call that length. And we want to update this one when the cut list update. We can set it as hidden, it really doesn't matter, but I'm going to keep it so you can see it. This length I would like to have in my export. So now I go into my export profile, find the one that I'm using, and then I'm going to add a new one which is a custom tools attribute, and that would be length. Let's format this correctly and hit OK. So the length I would like to come in maybe after description. So you can drag and drop these wherever you want in the Excel report. So now if I run the export again, Everything is going to be, as you can see in the background, updated. So we have 
preview of all of the components. And I didn't show you that, but I can do that now. Okay, so now we added the length column. So now we can see how long these leg pipe, lower crossbar and so on is. Now, if I select any of these lines, you can see the preview image of each individual component. That is true for everything that we have in this list. So now all I need to do is export the design already exists. I don't care, I want to replace it. We could run this export to a text form format like a CSV file. Uh, we could run it directly to an ERP system, a database connection, uh, or we could do it like in this case to an Excel file. And as you can see, we uh, create a very nice looking uh, Excel report of the design that we are having. Okay, let's try a different one. In this one, uh, we have some sheet metal, so I'm going to run the export of this one, and we can see that the icons change. Now, I could really use an information on, on these part files. I would like to know if they have bent or not. Do we have any information about that? Well, we can look at the cut list properties. And in here, we can see that there is a property called has bends. I'm going to copy that one and just put that into my notepad because I also want to have the number of bins. So I'm going to copy this one as well. And then I'm just going to cancel out of this one. So these two values I would like to have in my Excel report. Okay, so into options, cut list properties, add an attribute, we can select hidden on it and write value on cut list update. Then we want the next one, the has been. We add that as a property, like so. Then I want to have these two in my export profile. So for the export profile, I'm just going to add two new lines. That would be a custom tools attribute the has bins and the number of bins. And these two I want to have probably after length. So I'm going to drag that up and up. So now I can clearly see my design intent and if anything needs any special attention. So if I open up the export again, now we have the has bins, no, and obviously the number then is zero. Okay, let's try and do this a bit more complicated. So I'm going to open up an assembly with some different stuff on the table. Just to show you how we can do this in, in practical terms. So from this one, I want to run the export. So pressing the export is going to build the list that we need, setting all of the preview images if we are going to use those. And you can see that SolidWorks is working quite hard and that is uh, what we like. We like the software to do the work for us, right? But here it is. So now my assembly was listed in this uh, preview and we can see that we have a assembly file and we have a part file containing these cut list items. We have another part file containing these items, another one and another one. So everything is in here and we can see that some of these has bends and we can even see how many bends there are in it. So this two complex tray has 24 bends. If I run this, uh, this export, then uh, yeah, we want to override. We get what we expect. 
So we get a, a nice looking Excel file with everything that we are wanting to have in this one. And you can see that I just showed how you can add properties to your export profiles very easily. So it's fully configurable and very easy to set this up. So the Excel file was here and everything is highlighted as we want it to be. Now, there are a few things you need to know. So under the options for the export profile, the export profile itself has some new settings. So now you can include Weltman cut list item and have a detailed cut list. If you remove the detailed cut list, we are going to sum up, sum up the length required for the different members. And I can actually show you that on the table because that is going to be uh, more clear in that case. We can also select to include sheet metal cut list items and solid body cut list items. This can be done for indented assemblies. We can do it for top level only, but we cannot do it for parts. Uh, I want to remove this detailed cut list and I don't want to have solid body items or sheet metal items. So now if I open up the table again, you will see a, a big difference in the export because now we are not going to show these feet plate and, and this spider. So running the export. And there is a question, uh, I will get back to that in just a few seconds. So now I stripped away the solid body cut list items as well as the sheet metal items. And now we only have one leg pipe. And uh, this is, yeah, actually I, I hacked my leg frame. So it's not going to show the length. I'm sorry about that. But from, uh, from in here, we can actually drive what is going to show in the bomb quantity. So that would be length in that case. So I would have to go through these ones and define length. And this is a standard functionality in uh, SolidWorks, what I'm doing right now. So you can manipulate the bomb quantity from in here. And now if I run the export again, we should get a different result. So now it's not going to be quantity, it's going to be the total length of the profiles required for, for this structure. And it's taking its time. Um, I think this is due to the webinar maybe, I'm not entirely sure because it has been running quite quickly uh, just before this one. But now you can see the quantity adds up into the total amount, the cut length that I need, the bar length that I need. There is one more thing that I want to show in the options. For the export profile, if I edit this one, there is an option as well a bit further down to use the part preview image for cut list item. And you can actually define if you want to have that preview or not. So depending on the structure size that you are exporting, if you have a, a lot of members, uh, then maybe the preview is going to consume too much time during the export, but play around with, uh, with these settings and see what you get. And as always, you can uh, convert files during the export as well. Now, there was a question regarding different properties that we are having. So if I look at one of these Weltman profiles, custom tools are going to add a lot of information into the Weltman scope of your part files. 
In, uh, in this case, for instance, we have a rotational angle. If I wanted to have that in my export profile, I could simply copy this text and go in as I did before, go to the options and then go to the sheet metal settings, or workman settings in here and add this one, finish that one and add it to the export profile. So it's very easy to uh, set up and use. So I'm going to add, oh, sorry, custom tools attribute, and that would be rotational angle. Okay, okay, and export. Now it's going to take a, a few seconds for this one to update one more time. But we can add these properties as we go. Uh, whatever we need, we can put in here for sure. And we're not limited to uh, whatever we already have in the cut list items. And this is a very valid point to make at this point as well. So when we can see that this is working, I'm going to show you something you might not know exist, but it has been existing for a long time in, in custom tools. But now someplace in this report, we have the rotational angle. If I select one of these items, any of these items, and go to properties in custom tools, we are going to show the properties for the cut list item. Now, these properties can be very individual and these can be driven entirely by you. Uh, maybe you want to have a, a drop down for vendor, uh, maybe you want to have a drop down for process and whatever. Uh, you can even add sequence numbers in here as well. So everything can be uh, defined. And again, this is simply a matter of adding things into the options side where you have the control of everything that you would like to have. So for instance, uh, let's just add something called demo. Demo list. And we could try maybe a combo box. See if there is anything funny. Type. And okay, so now I added a type list into this one. I'm not sure it's going to make sense, but let's see. So now we have a list we can select from and we can add that property to the cut list property and to the Excel export if you want to do that. So very flexible system and very nice way of working with your design. Okay. In fact, that is all I had to show for today. Uh, our next webinar will be related to another new feature that you get in Custom Tools 2019 SP1, and this is uh, the export on, of configurations. And uh, this is going to take place on April 11th, same time as today. Uh, make sure you, you clear the date because this is also going to be a world premiere. We are open for questions when the recording is stopped, but first I want to thank you for attending this webinar and I hope to see all of you for the next one. So thank you and have a nice day. We are in the life-saving business. We kill your routines before they kill you.